Hey there, future college students. I'm going to assume since you pressed it on this video, you're looking for ways to improve on your ACT. Well, you're in luck. One of the best ways to improve on the ACT is to practice the very specific skills that they are going to test you on. Now, this video is part of a playlist of the most common pre-algebra math skills that are tested from ACT tests to test eight. This particular video is going to focus on ratios and proportions. Now, proportions show up all over the test. Generally speaking, it's considered a pre-algebra topic, but proportions can really show up in all the other topics as well. Algebra topics, geometry, trigonometry. So this is a very important topic for you to really understand. Now, if you practice these problems, you have a better chance of getting all of the proportion questions right on the next ACT. Okay, I want to remind you a couple things before we get started here. There's a document in the description that has all of the problems that I'm going to be working in this video. It's to your benefit to actually stop the video, work the problems first, and then come back and watch the solutions. And I'll give you some tips and strategies to work in these problems as well. Also, don't forget to please subscribe as it helps out our channel and we'll try to make more videos that will be useful for you as you prepare for the ACT. Alright, good luck. Okay, welcome back everybody to the next set of questions that we're going to work for pre-algebra. So in this particular video, we're going to focus on the most common ratio and proportion problems that you could see on the ACT math test. And this, of course, is a pre-algebra type question. So just like all the other videos, if you've not done one of these before, the best thing to do is to look in the description and you can go get the document that I am actually working on and I definitely recommend that you print that document work the five questions before you watch the video and then you can watch the explanations and see how you did so let's go ahead and get started here so again just as we usually see a little bit of a word problem here it says the ratio of Sophie's height to Shannon's height is five to seven so if I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and write that down so this is Sophie's height to Shannon's height which is five to seven. Now keep in mind, we can also write that as five to seven. You can write ratios in multiple ways. It says the ratio of Shannon's height to Nick's height is four to three. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and get that information down here. So we've got Shannon's height to Nick's height. It's four to three. And then of course, I can also write that down in fractional form. So it says, what is the ratio of Sophie's height to Nick's height? So we can see here, we need to connect these two together. And what should be obvious to you is the connecting piece is Shannon's height. Now, the problem, however, though, is in both ratios, Shannon's height is a different value. So we want to get Shannon's height to the same value from a fractional standpoint. That way we can then make a like for like comparison. And so the way we do this is just to kind of find a common multiple between seven and four. And of course, the easiest thing to do is to multiply them together to get 28. So let's go ahead and set this up. Now I'm going to do this with the fractions. I think it looks a lot easier with the fractions. So if I want to do this on the on the original ratio, I'm going to multiply both parts of the fraction by four. That's going to give us a fraction of 20 over 28. And then on the second one, I'm going to multiply them, the numerator and denominator by seven. That gives us a fraction of 28 over 21. And you can see here that the 28 in this fraction or this ratio is representative of Shannon's height and the 28 over here in this ratio is also representative of Shannon's height. So if I rewrote these ratios, it would be 20 to 28. And then in this case, it'd be 28 to 21. And now we're kind of working in like terms. And so we can see that Sophie's height to Nick would be that of 20 to 21. And if we look at our answer choices, that is answer choice D. Again, I get a little wordy on some of these explanations and I write down a lot of stuff that maybe you wouldn't write down. And let's be honest, you might find a simpler or faster way. So 
I don't want you to take my explanations as the only way to work these problems. I'm just trying to show you multiple versions, multiple ways to do this. And more than anything, I'm just trying to give you that experience of working ACT questions. The more you do this, the more comfortable you'll get with ACT style questions and the better you'll get at them. Okay, very good. We can see here in this next question, another word problem. We got a few numbers in here. It says at a refinery, it says 10,000 tons of sand. I'm just going to go ahead and mark that. And keep in mind, I'm using, you know, computer technology here. I can highlight, I can change colors. You would want to annotate this stuff with your pencil, maybe underline these things. That would be really important so that as you're setting up the problem, you have a quick way to go back and find the relevant information. So 100,000 tons of sand are required to make 60,000 barrels of this material. It says how many tons of sand, so we that's question mark, how many tons of sand do we need to make 3,000 barrels of the tarry material? So we're going to set up a ratio with our initial amount. So we have 100,000 ton of that material that makes 60,000 barrels. And so if we're looking for a missing part here, this is where our ratios would lead us to a proportion. So we have a missing number of tons to make 3,000 barrels of this material. And if you recall from math class, if you have a proportion with a missing part, you simply cross multiply to find the missing part. So I'll go ahead and do that work now. And you can see here through the cross multiplication process and then solving for X, we get a value of 5,000. So that means we need 5,000 tons of sand to make 3,000 barrels of the tarry material. And we can see that that is answer choice A. Our next problem is actually a very popular problem and it has a very simple trick that a lot of students don't know either because they don't remember it or maybe math teacher hasn't shown a problem like this but this is a problem that can pop up on the ACT pretty regularly and I want to kind of give you a good simple strategy to do this. It says a triangle with a perimeter of 89. So we know the perimeter is all the sides of the triangle added up. It has one side that is 19 inches long. The lengths of the other two sides have a ratio of 3 to 7. What is the length in inches of the longest side of the triangle? Now, we don't know how long two of the sides are, but we know that when we add the three sides together, that we would end up with a total of 89. So the simple way to do this within the ratio is to actually give it a variable. And so watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say that 3x and 7x. So think about this. If I said, you know, x equals to 2, that would mean I would have a ratio of 6 to 14, which still reduces to 3 to 7. So it doesn't matter what my x value is, I'm still going to get that ratio of parts being 3 to 7. And we want to keep that relationship. But here's the benefit of throwing an x in there. By doing that, I can then use that ratio. I can say that the side length 3x plus the side length 7x plus 19, which is the third side, when we add those all together, that would give us a total of 89. Now I actually have a value that I can solve for here. So if I just did the basic math where I'm solving for x, we can use that information to come up with the length of all of our sides. I'm going to go ahead and solve this now. So you can see here that it says x equals to 7. Well, I need to use that. I need to go back in here, and I need to plug that into the x value that I had earlier. So 3 times 7 is going to end up giving me 21. So then I have 7 times 7 is going to equal to 49. And so if we look at this, I've got one side length that is 19, one side length that is 21, one side length that is 49, and I've done my math correctly, those added together should create a perimeter of 89. And also, if I did my ratios right, that 21 to 49 ratio should reduce down to 3 to 7. So everything kind of lines up here. Now, going back to the question, it says, what is the longest side of the triangle? 
Well, all we have to do is simply look now at the three given sides, and we can see that 49 is the longest side of the triangle, and that is answer choice E. So this step right here where we put a variable embedded in the ratio and then use that to help solve the problem is a very simple strategy to do these ratio problems. So keep an eye out for those types of questions on the ACT. Now, one of the things that you're going to find out about ratio and proportion problems are that they don't have to be pre-algebra questions. They can pop up in geometry. They can pop up in algebra 1, algebra 2. They can pop up in coordinate geometry. They can pop up in trig. So that's all six content areas that ratios or proportions can pop up. That being the case, you tend to get a number of questions on the ACT that use ratios or proportions to a certain degree some way or another. So don't be surprised if you see more than one proportion problem on the ACT math test. So let's take a look at this geometry problem, if you will. In the figure below where ABC, triangle ABC, is similar to triangle XYZ, and if you notice, they kind of gave you a little information. So if you were unfamiliar with that little symbol, they tell you that it means similar. It says, what is the perimeter of triangle XYZ? Now, this is you need to know a little geometry to do this. So while this is a pre-algebra video, you kind of have to have a little geometry knowledge. And so we, we are kind of blending some skills from various content areas. So let me just kind of a quick reminder of the math behind this. If you have similar triangles, the angles are congruent, but the sides are proportional. So we want to really look for the two corresponding sides where we actually have values so that we can set up a ratio. So there's our ratio. We have a 17 to 29.75 ratio between the side lengths of each of these. Now, here's the problem. We want the perimeter of XYZ, but we have actually two missing sides. So if we said that was side A and this was side B, we would actually have to use that ratio to find each of the missing sides and then add them up to get the perimeter. However, there's actually quite a neat little shortcut here. Perimeter is a side length. It's just all of the side lengths added up together. So you can actually use this ratio to come up with the perimeter as well. And so if we look at the bigger triangle, ABC, and we add up all those lengths, we know that the perimeter of that triangle is 70, and we can actually use that information to find the perimeter of the smaller triangle. And again, once the proportion is set up, it's just a basic cross multiplication problem, and I'll go ahead and do that now to find my perimeter. And we can see here that the perimeter of the smaller triangle would be 40, and that's answer choice C. And that's a much quicker way than trying to find the side length A using the ratio, then doing a completely separate proportion to find side length B to using the, the given ratio, and then adding it all up. So this is a little bit of a shortcut to those perimeter problems. The last question here is your basic proportion problem. And so this is, this could be classified as Algebra 1, Pre-Algebra, whatever level the ACT wants to take these proportion problems to is basically the way that they can classify them. But it's still a Pre-Algebra concept. So the one mistake here that a lot of students make is when they do their cross multiplication, since we have an expression, they don't distribute the way that they should. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how you should work this problem. So when we do the cross multiplication, we should actually be multiplying 8 times x plus 3, and I'm going to use parentheses there. The mistake that a lot of students make is in not using parentheses, they would have 8x plus 3, which would actually be incorrect. On the second part of the cross multiplication, I'm going to do 7 times x plus 5. And so the reason we're using parentheses is to verify that we get our distributive property in here and solve for the correct value for x. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And by using my algebra properties, I can see that x is equal to 11. And it says, what value of x makes this true? And basically what they're saying is, if you took x equals to 11 and you plugged it back in to the given va variable in the original question, that it would make this a true statement. And so what we are going to have here is 
7 over 14 is going to equal to 8 over 16, and we know that those both reduce to 1 half, so that is true. So x equals to 11 makes this a true statement, so answer choice E is the correct answer. All right, that's a quick look at ratios and proportions and how they can show up in a variety of ways on the ACT math. Hope that was useful information to you. And definitely go to other, part, other videos in this playlist and get some more practice and make sure you're nailing these pre-algebra questions.